Hey, what's up you guys? In this video, we're gonna work on this keyboard in 3ds Max and Substance Painter. So please uh, support us on Patreon because this helps us keep going. Uh, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do in order to create this keyboard here is to set up the reference image, of course, and using a plane, we're gonna uh, actually set the uh, the overall the overall geometry that we're gonna work from basically this is gonna be a plane and uh, we're gonna make sure that the size of the uh, of this plane we're gonna start from is gonna match the size of the reference image we have here and also we're gonna make sure that um, the size of the reference image is accurate compared to the plane we apply it to because this is very important for uh, proportion and in order to see through the mesh here or the geometry, just um, uh, use Alt X from the keyboard, which is the shortcut for uh, for the X-ray mode. Okay, for now I'm gonna try to uh, test some things before we start. Probably this is not gonna be the greatest idea, but we'll try it out. See if this is gonna be good enough. Which is trying to chamfer the edges. Uh, definitely. Uh, gonna be probably using something else because it seems like it is too much so we're gonna have to uh, create a ring around these edges select all the edges ring then connect then you gonna be able to uh, use the shell the uh, the chamfer modifier to smooth the edges that um, or the edge that you actually connected using the other edges around okay confirm that after you do this uh, you're gonna make sure that um, when you look at it from the perspective view it is something that is that you are happy with and we're going to change the material and uh, this is completely up to you you can change the material and the color to whatever you want now we're going to select the uh these polygons on the side and uh try to apply or to inset once or twice so we're going to go with once and uh, we're going to make sure that we're going to add the second and the second one is of course to create some depth so we're going to go to the front viewport and uh, we're going to move these vertices sometimes it's better some, sometimes we can actually use the uh, scale scale tool in order to move the vertices uh, close to other uh, to each other or push them apart but sometimes they are just too far apart to perform this accurately so what you're gonna have to do is go to the polygons that we are gonna work with and move them slightly uh, just the amount we need and we're gonna have to after that we're gonna have to cut the uh, the model the geometry into two parts and later we're gonna delete the part that we didn't work on yet and bring the other half using symmetry modifier okay we're gonna search with the symmetry modifier and once you're done you're gonna convert it back to Urba poly and uh, this way you can work on the other half without uh, technically working on it manually without working on it uh, kind of uh, step by step like you did the first time okay now we're gonna apply um, a transparent material to our uh, geometry here because uh, there isn't really uh, a way to control a direct way to control um, the x-ray uh, amount or visibility amount which is something that is um, kind of weird since uh, Autodesk doesn't that didn't uh, develop this uh, thing anyways now we're gonna start crea creating some um, some keys here so we're gonna use a simple box and we're gonna make sure it is um, uh, the proportions and the size of the uh, each, each side is gonna be correct depending on how it looks on the reference image and it, it doesn't uh, when when I look at it from uh, from the, the reference image, uh, it doesn't seem like it is a box, nor it is a rectangle uh, shape, uh, or a uh, kind of <clears throat> it's not squared. It's it's a rectangle with one side longer than the other, so it is not 
definitely is not it is not squared it's it seems like it is a little bit taller on um, a little bit uh, tighter on the sh uh, on the sides so it kind of goes um, in a direction um, that is um, that you can see here on on the reference image and what I'm trying to do now is uh, just try to make the uh, the upper polygon a little bit smaller or just narrower uh, on the sides as you can see here but probably later I'm, I'm going to change it a little bit because I don't like the fact that um the edge is not kind of uh is not kind of chamfered from the top and the bottom when we look at it from the top anyways uh here we are trying also to use the chamfer modifier or the chamfer tool in order to smooth out uh the edges and um this is uh, going to make things look way better because leaving it as it was is not going to be that great anyways I don't like it already because uh, the the fact that kind of it is narrow on the sides and from from this angle uh, that we are looking at it from uh, <clears throat> it seems like the top and the uh, the bottom are kind of not really adjusted we're gonna take a, we're gonna take care of that later for now we're gonna duplicate these keys and um, uh, it seems like um, uh, this is actually the uh, the stupid way of doing this kind of stuff because uh, there are other tools in 3ds Max to do this. So I'm going to show you how you uh, some kind of uh, if you try to do it manually or if you are not knowledgeable of the tools that 3ds Max has in order to do this stuff. So as you can see here, you're going to find yourself trying to adjust these manually, and uh, you're going to try to put kind of put every key in its place uh the uh, the traditional way or the 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 hard way the this is manual labor so there are actually some smarter way to do this and as you can see here uh, if All right, as you can see here, no matter what we do uh, in order to try to get it right, it's not going to be because there are so many things um, going on here and there are so many, so many pieces, so many keys. So we're going to do it the smart way, which is going to be trying to create a, uh, a line and that is gonna, that we're going to use as a guideline for doing uh, uh, or applying uh, a certain tool that is going to allow us, which is going to be go to align tools, align then you're going to go to spacing tool. So the spacing tool, you're going to pick uh, the line that you're going to use and you're going to make sure that you don't move the camera because uh, for some reason, when you move the camera, the alignment goes away. So you're going to go back again to tools, align the spacing tool. Then you're going to have to select your path or the line you created in order to see uh, your copies taking place. So we're going to go, of course, with 13 copies and we're going to confirm that. Okay, when we are done with the with this process, we're gonna have to, uh, of course, copy these keys because right now we've got the gist of it. We have this uh, the right space between these elements, and uh, we're gonna start copying them. Uh, of course, we're gonna try to uh, arrange them according to what we see here in the reference image, uh, since the um, these rows of keys are not aligned perfectly, and since these keys are uh, uh, they, they are instances we can modify one and we're going to see the result taking place on the others in the same time. Uh, for now we're going to start copying these keys and of course we're going to move them a little bit if necessary because as I said before the alignment is not similar and the position uh, is not similar either so we're going to have to uh, try to do our best in order to get it in the right place. Uh, and we're going to work also on the individual uh, unique pieces on um, on the sides, on the left and on the right. Uh, by the way, keep holding shift in, in order to copy these keys, of course.
All right, it seems like our keys that are taking place properly on top of that keyboard for now. All right, when we go back to the perspective, we can see the result we created here. And it seems like we are doing a nice work already. And we're going to uh, make sure that when you copy one key to uh, a key that is going to be different, make sure it is a copied on an instance. Uh, because you don't want to lose the work you've done previously and uh, you don't want to change the uh, how the previous uh, keys we worked on look this is going to be very important all right this one here probably uh, is gonna these are gonna look similar as you can see here, we're trying to make them a little bit smaller. Also, we're going to copy them. We, there is no need to use the spacing tool here because we have just a few keys and um, probably trying to copy those uh, as they are is going to be a smart move, as you can see here. And we're going to do the same similar thing over here. We're going to keep holding shift and we're going to try to move them uh, even uh, further. Uh, for this one here, we need only three, so uh, also the size is not similar. We're going to go uh, with uh, one copy probably, and we're going to change the size a little bit, and we're going to copy them over again. For these pieces on the sides, uh, we're going to treat, treat them individually. Uh, so each one is going to have its own shape and size. It seems like the uh, space between uh, if each and every set a set of keys is a little bit different. So sometimes you're gonna have to treat them uh, manually and um, make sure that everything is placed correctly.
course we're going to do the same thing up here uh, <clears throat> and I think even though it seems like these keys up here are a little bit different uh, it seems like um, I'm going to leave them as they are because uh, it's going to be extra work to change up things and stuff and I, uh, and I believe uh, this is kind of a little bit far away from the viewer and uh, it's not going to be seen in the first place so we don't have to worry about it too much and of course we're going to copy it a few times For these keys here, it's going to be similar, especially the ones on the uh, on the right. All right, we're going to take a look at it from the perspective view and it seems uh, it seems like we have created all the necessary keys and um, we're going to now bring the uh, the material um, the the uh, the normal material not the transparent material and as you can see we're going to move the uh, the keys in their proper place um, on top of the keyboard where they where 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 they belong and um, it seems like the overall modeling is over and uh, we're gonna add maybe some uh, final details and uh, before we uh, before we start kind of um, working on uh, the high poly and the uh, uh, further and the low poly of course which is the purpose of creating in the first place all right those lines were not necessary Uh, here what I'm what I'm doing is um, uh, I'm creating a floating geometry that is going to be uh, underneath the keyboard so this is going to be um, kind of an empty space that is going to be baked uh, underneath the keyboard it's not going to be seen anyways so probably we should not be spending um, any lengthy period on it because it's not that important and probably it's not going to be seen anyways as I said so uh, keep holding shift in order to extrude these edges
keep moving these edges around because um, it's necessary to create something that looks like uh, it is important when you look at it and uh, it makes you feel that there are some details going on uh, otherwise we, we don't we are kind of uh, bothering ourselves creating something that is not going to be interesting in the first place which is uh, which is not that great I'm actually now following the reference image I have for this keyboard in order to create this shape which of course doesn't appear on the reference image um, <clears throat> I used for creating the keys and everything else so um, it's gonna be underneath as you can see and um, we have to flip it around because uh, the the black uh, the colorful uh, the colorful uh, <clears throat> face or where the normals are, uh, are pointing needs to face us and the other one is going to be facing against the bottom of the keyboard also we're going to keep holding shift and extrude the borders the outside borders of this um, of this section here because uh, this is going to be uh, this is specifically created for baking and as you can see it's going to be prepared well because later we're going to use it to bake in substance painter you know uh, there are certain things we need to respect in order to get certain uh, quality of bake This is this is a screw I brought from uh, another project or some some small pieces I have. So don't worry too much about it if you don't do this because it's not it's gonna be uh, in the bottom. It's not gonna be even noticeable. Uh, so um, yeah, this is not very big of a deal. This one here is going to be the uh, the floating geometry for the uh, for the screws. So uh, we're going to create the illusion that there is a hole where the screws are positioned. And uh, for some reason, um, we're going to try. So uh, for some reason, baking in Substance Painter, uh, baking these small uh, uh, kind of uh, small pieces uh, is kind of there are going to be some issues we're going to talk about later probably. Uh, for now we're gonna try to work it out we're gonna try to make it work and if not um, it's not gonna be seen in the first place so we don't have to worry too much about it Alright, applying the turbo smooth modifier is gonna make it look like it is part of the uh, part of the board.
we're going to try to copy these screws over to the other parts of the keyboard. We're going to copy them as instances because uh, we might make some changes along the way. Okay, for now we are creating the um, the low poly and the high poly for our keyboard, as you can see. And this process is very, very important because <clears throat> at some point we are gonna start working on uh, or treating these different types of uh, poly um, or in kind of uh, each section or each part is gonna have uh, its uh, own uh, poly count. When one is gonna be high poly and one is going to be low poly so for the high poly we're going to start adding uh, the support edges in order to intensify the quality of polygons and to make it smoother and everything else because it doesn't really how many uh, or how much polygons are in there or how many polygons are in there but for the low poly we're going to go the other side we're going to try to reduce uh, the poly count and uh, try to make it look good with um, as low uh, as possible uh, uh, when it comes to poly, uh, the poly count. So as you can see the floating geometry looks like um, it's doing a good job. Also we're going to try to support the edges over here on uh, the top from the sides All right, when we apply the Turbo Smooth, you can see that things are a little bit smoother than they were before. And um, yeah, you can add and subtract support edges if you want to, depending on how sharp your edges are. And it doesn't have to be too sharp, by the way. So uh, because um, in, in in the baking process, the uh, we, it is uh, we need it to be less sharp than it's supposed to be when you look at it because baking works in in a way that kind of um, supports this type of things let's just say for now we are we are supporting the um, the keys I think some support edges the keys and there are two ways of going about doing this uh, you can do it this way and there is nothing wrong with it but uh, <clears throat> the uh the wireframe when, when you look at it it's not going to look that pleasant from a distance because we are not properly connecting the vertices and everything else or 
we can just uh, connect the vertices properly using the cut tool or the connect tool or whatever and you're gonna end up with the same result but the only difference is uh, when you apply turbo smooth you're gonna see a much cleaner mesh and much organized and kind of a mesh that is um, created based on quadrant and on quads But this is gonna take a little bit of time, especially uh, since the keyboard have some individual pieces. Uh, basically, we have quite few pieces that are individually created, and uh, as you can see, we we worked on one, and we are kind of getting the results all over the place. And uh, you can do this. I just stopped the video, and I've done some several uh, separate pieces. And uh, for now, we are. In the log poly version, and we're gonna delete all the things that are not necessary. We're gonna we we are going to keep the keyboard, the keys, and the screws. So floating geometry is gonna be removed completely because it's gonna be brought back using normal mass when we uh, when we start baking in Substance Painter. Okay, as you can see here, we are trying to reduce the poly count. There are a lot of polygons here that are not necessary and we can easily replace using the normal map. So uh, right click, collapse in order to bring um, that border to one vertex, which is ideal for our case. Also try to find any uh, edges that are not necessary and get rid of those. Uh, for example, here when it comes to this screw here of course um, these uh, kind of these deep areas um, uh, and um, height related stuff so we're gonna get rid of those because they are gonna be replaced by the normal map as we said before so any bumps or any uh, cavities or anything that is not flat surface we can replace later using normal maps and in baking inside substance painter basically and uh, generally speaking there are some exceptions of course uh, for now we are bringing the high poly in order to compare and see uh, if we are following the high poly because it's very important that the low poly is going to be matching the the high poly uh, since the um, the information that that the uh, that they are going to be baked are going to be taken from the high poly itself and put on top of the low poly in order to get a low poly version that looks almost exactly like the high poly. All right, now we are going to jump to uh, the process of UV unwrapping. Uh, for this one here, uh, it's going to be easy and simple because uh, we have a lot of different pieces that are similar. So this is not going to be hard on us. Uh, so <clears throat> this is going to be the, the keyboard or the board itself. Um, there are a few uh, principles that you need to remember. Um, <clears throat> we, we are right now trying to stitch all the pieces together. And um, in order to unwrap something like this, we're gonna go to mapping, normal mapping, and um, box. We're gonna go to mapping, and um, we're gonna use the box mapping, which is basically is gonna help us to unwrap anything inside VS Max because it's kind of um, I use it for everything, generally speaking, because it's very effective.
and the rest is about organizing the pieces and stitching all the pieces that are separated and thrown all over the place it's very effective all right for these pieces here for these keys also is going to be very straightforward we're going to go to open the uv editor uh, go to mapping and um, box mapping as well and we're going to stitch the um these pieces here shift s from the keyboard or right click uh or right click uh stitch selected also we forgot actually to delete the belt bottom of this key because it's absolutely not necessary uh since it's not going to be seen anyways there's no way you can see this All right, so um, I think that we should keep it as it is, but for experimenting, I'm going to see if we straighten these out. Uh, I want to see if um, there are going to be some serious stretching or not in the mesh or in the UVs when we, <clears throat> when we do this. So uh, we're going to try to um, put these um, somewhere close. Uh, also try to readjust the size of these islands in order to you know, in order to match each other perfectly okay it seems like we have some issues of stretching we will try to work this out and uh, try to um, fix this but if not we are gonna go back to the original form we started with Actually, it does not seem like this is terrible, but when we look at it closely, it seems like we have some minor issues right there that probably we can fix. But um, on the other hand, it seems like we are creating other problems um, in other some other areas. So. All right, so when we make sure that the um, the size of the uh, <clears throat> the checker texture is matching the the size of the board uh, between the keyboard and the board itself, so all right, between the keys and the board, it seems like uh, we have some issues right there. It seems like the uh, the checker texture is, is showing us some distortions in the center. I don't really like that. So we're gonna go back to the original shape, which seems to which seems to work much better. But um, generally speaking, this is a small piece. We can go without this uh, issue being noticed, anyways. But kind of, I'm. We're trying to do the um, things that work properly. We don't want to learn something that is kind of uh, wrong uh, kind of uh, or generally speaking because when you don't do things properly once you are probably going to repeat that when it comes to the serious stuff which is not good in the long run okay for these pieces it's gonna be very similar so uh, same process is going to repeat itself over and over and over again.
Shift S from the keyboard or right click stage selected. When it comes to this screw as well, we're going to try to do the same thing. We're going to open the UV editor. We're going to go to select everything, mapping, normal mapping, and box mapping. Or we can use planar. Uh, we can use the planar tool, uh, as you can see here, to make this very flat, as you can see. And um, we can push the outer edge a little bit out because the projection is from top to bottom so of course this is going to be hidden When we are done with UV unwrapping, we're going to uh, attach all the pieces together. So convert one to EDIB poly and attach all the low poly pieces together. And um, of course, it seems like we are forgetting one big piece here. So <clears throat> we're going to attach everything together because right now we need to pack the UVs. All right, so we have some different pieces thrown around, as you can see. It is a little bit messy around here, but uh, as we organize them inside the box using the rearrangement tool and packing tool, uh, we're gonna get something uh, nice, and we're gonna do the same. We're gonna, tr we're gonna try to do the same thing over here. We're gonna try to put the board uh, in, in the right place, and after that, we will also try to make sure we're going to fit these pieces inside. So uh, this tutorial and the one um, before it, the UVs uh, or the UV layout or U the UV template has so many pieces in it. Uh, so uh, it's also, it's, um, it can be possible that we want uh, sometimes it's okay if we uh, keep the, the the UVs overlapping the UV islands we don't have to actually spread them all over the place and we're gonna give each each uh, island its specific UV space but for the most part usually I don't uh, overlap the UVs no matter how big the uh, or how many or how much repetitive the pieces are because I want each uh, centimeter or each millimeter in my model to be to have its unique texture so um, I, I don't believe that um, the texturing is gonna look realistic or even natural if we repeat the UVs and overlap them and stuff because 
uh, the, the repetition kills the um, um, the realism and uh, the natural look that we are after. So right now I'm trying manually to put these pieces here and it's gonna take a few minutes to do this. And if you wanna put them there just quickly and rapidly you can do this. Of course the UV template is gonna be less accurate but if you want something tight and accurate you have to spend a few minutes on it in, in order to pack it correctly and nicely. And um, as you can see here, I'm trying constantly to change and adjust the overall size of these islands because sometimes we might need to adjust a few elements and or adjust everything. This is kind of a mess, I'm not going to lie to you, because there are so many pieces here and you're going you're gonna to have to be a little bit patient working on this one. Alright, after we are done, this is the result uh, we, we ended up with. Uh, I hope uh, you could have, you could, uh, or you were able to do this yourself because it's not that difficult. It's all about um, using uh, as much space as possible, which is the purpose behind using, uh, behind using uh, the, uh, the UV template properly. So for now, we're going to jump to the next stage, which is naming our, uh, our model, the high poly model and the low poly model for baking. This process is extremely important for, uh, for the baking uh, that we're going to do in Substance Painter. So we're going to make sure that we're not going to make any mistakes. By the way, uh, naming, uh, naming process here in, uh, in this model is going to be very quick because we have very few pieces. I don't mean, of course, that the pieces are few, but uh, the names that we're going to use are few because we have keys, we have the board, and we have, that's it. <clears throat> and then we have the screws, three things. All right, now we are in Substance Painter, <clears throat> and um, uh, we'll try to bake some. Uh, <clears throat> we're gonna try to bake the high poly on top of the low poly, as you've seen. So 
So we're gonna open the baking dialog and uh, we're gonna choose only normal and we're gonna bring our high poly model and uh, <clears throat> we're gonna change some things. Uh, we're gonna go by mesh name. <clears throat> we're gonna change the suffix for the high poly and, and for the low poly. We're gonna do a quick test bake. And it seems like the result is acceptable and we are seeing some good results over here, generally speaking, of course. Okay, so... We're going to proceed with uh, the real bacon right now. So we're going to have to change some parameters. We're going to go with anti-aliasing and super sampling. We're going to change the parameters of this, especially the ID. It is extremely important. <clears throat> also, the ambient occlusion is important to get some better results. We're gonna double check because you don't want to perform uh, half an hour bake or something like that then later you're gonna discover that you made a mistake when playing with the settings of baking You might as well want to change the frontal and rear distance um, in bacon because uh, I think the keys are too close to each other and you might see some artifacts uh, and some errors in baking. So for now, we're going to create a fill layer and uh, we're gonna we're gonna use um, a mask uh, that I created created using the reference image. I'm gonna give you this file, you're gonna find it on Patreon uh, with the reference image of course. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to bring the uh, the mask, the white, black and black and white alpha or the alpha and um, we're gonna change some settings here to uh, tell uh, Substance Painter what exactly what this is and we're gonna drop it over this tensile area so this is gonna be it and um, create a mask and drop it over the stencil after that you're gonna be able to see something that looks like this so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to put this keyboard in the right place in order to start painting these keys properly. All right, after we put our keyboard in the right place, we're gonna use a simple brush, uh, simple, uh, we're gonna use the right alpha, of course, in order to do this, and uh, we're gonna start painting. So we're gonna increase the hardness in, or, in order to avoid any soft spots or something of that sort. And we're going to start painting the, um, the keys.
So um, as you can see here, as you paint over the stencil, you can see that the letters and the shapes are taking place uh, on top of the keys. This is a very, uh, the, a very fun thing to do because it's, it's very straightforward. It's a painting in 3D, which is great. Uh, it's going to take you up to two or three minutes to do this. Make sure you don't move the uh, the camera or the keyboard in the viewport because this is going to mess everything up. All right, when we are done with all the keys, we're going to deactivate the stencil and go back to uh, the normal um, angle in the viewport and look at it from a different perspective. Uh, it seems like we have done a nice job over here and uh, it seems quite realistic, to be honest. Uh, we can go further and polish the textures even more with adding probably a little bit more brightness so a little bit more damage to the edges and stuff like these but uh, I think this is um, I think this is enough for now if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to support us on patreon if you can afford it if you can't please share this video around so people can find these videos to learn more Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.